you can see oil is still coming out in huge quantities okay it's dripping oh please don't tell me that you don't see it i mean we're not gonna put that thing back together until we found the leak okay while this cures i should lecture oh my god because you're mad at me yes i didn't do anything land rover did something poor lady sold this car because she was just she Done. didn't know what else to do with it. Yeah, she's probably driving a Toyota by now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because of Land Rover. I'm not sure if that's the right taper. That's the right taper, okay. Hope you get it. Oh my god. This is gonna be round two of my little find the oil leak of the transmission exercise. Uh, my last repair didn't work and I'm gonna take the transfer case out again. And this time I think I know what the problem is because I found a technical bulletin from 2019. Let me take the transfer case out first and then I show you guys what I found. You're not gonna believe that. And it's still coming clearly there from between the gearbox and the transfer case. Look who's coming home. I may get some help now. Can you push this up? <laughs> okay, you can go now. I'm not sure how much Christian is going to put into this video about the previous automatic gear transmission oil and filter change because we had an oil leak. We put the car back together and the oil leak was still there. And I said, if the oil leak is not fixed, it must be coming out of the casing. After we found out that the oil leak is still there, we researched online and there is a Land Rover bulletin. Put it over there. There's oil in here, but the oil is not coming from the transfer housing. The oil is, according to the Land Rover bulletin, coming from the ZF auto transmission HP8 housing, and I'm too small. Oh, please don't tell me that you don't see it. I mean... There is no leak. Let me have a look. We're not going to put that thing back together until we found the leak. This is a service bulletin we have from Land Rover. Which I found in the US. Um, there was an article from an automotive paper and that referred to this bulletin and then I did indeed find it in the US in English language. So the problem is this cavity. There is a faulty cast. The casting is at fault. And here you can see there is a cavity marked in blue. That's the one which is leaking. I can see when I first wiped this with my finger that it was very, very lightly wet. And I couldn't say if it's coming from here or from here. So I'm gonna rely on the, the service bulletin and I'm gonna fix this cavity here, just like they say. I don't see a damage in there. I was hoping that it's gonna, you know, be broken through the wall, but then it would be leaking too seriously. There are about 200,000 ZF8 HP70 transmissions built which have this cavity problem there. Basically a problem out of the manufacturing process. It does list the VIN numbers which are affected here and mine is exactly in that VIN number range. We got a 77 seven something, okay? So from 73 to 81, that's some 80,000 vehicles. Ours is right in the middle. So it's very likely that this is the problem. And there are a lot of other vehicles listed by the way, okay? So in the repair procedure, they describe that you got to mask the transmission end and then you use some repair putty and you glue in a special piece from Land Rover. That piece can be purchased for the uh, good value of 230 euros, okay? By the way, the putty, they want 200 euros and you got to pay for all of that plus the repair time. So we're going to do that all different, of course. It wouldn't be a lot of time. I bought the DEFCON putty, what they recommended. I shot it on eBay for 45 euros instead of 200 and I thought I have a really good deal. And then I did this test here with two pieces of aluminum and the putty is rinsing away, okay? It's just running away. You can't get it to stay in that cavity or in that groove. 
So this is hopeless. This putty will not work. Even shortly before it cured, it was still running away. So there is no chance, okay? Don't come back and say, oh, you gotta wait until it's cured. It don't work. The form piece I would have to glue in would have to basically be press fit, but I rather have it in such a way that the putty is making up the gap. So what I did is I researched and I found that the temperature resistance of this stuff is anyway only 160 degrees, which I find not very high. And of course, when you research these kind of glues, you come to JB Weld. So I ordered JB Weld out of the US, and that has, in this particular version, a temperature of 550 degrees. So that's nearly, I think, 290 degrees. So that will work. I did a test fit here, and the putty is way easier to handle, okay? It just sticks wherever you put it, it doesn't run away. So now we gotta test the strengths between these two. So first this one, this is the JB Weld one, okay? You're gonna have to trust me now a little bit, my calibrated arm, and of course the leverage here plays a big role, it's all clear, but all I wanna know is how strong is it in general? Ooh. It's quite strong. I want to say, you know, just to bond in a piece of aluminum to close a hole, that is good. Now let's take the putty what Land Rover recommends, which is only a partial gap filling here, okay? So I take it this way around and I push upwards. About the same leverage, everybody agrees. Watch it. That was less. So I'm but it's also, sure. also not glued entirely. Yeah, you can see that it run away, okay? Yeah. This is just not as nice as the JB Weld, okay? This is the DEFCON putty, what Land Rover recommends. This is the JB Weld, which, by the way, is a tenth of the price. <laughs> but you still paid for the DEFCON stuff. Okay, I know, but this clearly... It sucks. Yeah, this clearly does not look nice. It has less of a temperature, it was bonding less good, it was running away, it doesn't stay in place, versus the JB Weld bonded way better. It's much easier to use, it also cures faster. So I think we're not doing a mistake and we shouldn't get any negative comments by using JB Weld. JB Weld is also a way cooler name for something like well, that. Well, DEFCON is a cool name. DEFCON sounds like you would be in some nuclear war. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> we're going to DEFCON 2. So Christian is using a Dremel to um, scratch the surface, so the glue yeah. will bond better. Basically, to I'm gonna remove the oxide, okay? Completely. Yeah. He doesn't make any problems. So I got this all ground away in the area where the bond is gonna sit. See, this is a really fine dust. I'm gonna blow this out now, and maybe we can see that some of it is gonna stick in the oil. If you ask me, there is quite a lot of stuff stuck in there. Let's try this cavity up here, which is definitely clean. In this cavity, there is absolutely nothing stuck. And down here, the uh, aluminum debris is stuck pretty bad. So that is a sign for this being contaminated with oil. He's prepping a cardboard piece. That's a hot glue gun stick. I know what he's doing. Okay. Okay, while this cures, I should lecture. Oh my God. <laughs> I should lecture about Land Rover. Now Land Rover conducted a repair on this vehicle and I got the service bill for it. Isn't that nice? Yep. So um, here's the invoice from the repair Land Rover did. The customer complained that the vehicle is losing oil and it didn't pass the inspection. Also, the customer complained it is not shifting correctly from second into first gear. There is a big jerk. So they checked the gearbox. So for the diagnosis, they charged 111 euros. They found that the oil pan is um, wet. Same thing where I and I found, same thing where I and I repaired. Mm -hmm. Everybody is doing mistakes. <laughs> we stand to our mistakes. 
Further, they cleaned the vehicle for 47 euros. Replacing the oil pan took two hours, 380 euros. The oil for 260 euros and the oil pan with filter for 362 euros. So we are at a thousand euros on this page. They did the inspection, which is of course, you know, had nothing to do with it, but the car didn't get past MOT, so they did the inspection. And after that, they took the car to the MOT for 87 euros that's pretty cheap and then the car passed because it was just cleaned so the total invoice was 2492 euros it was done at 108,377 miles in may and do you know what the mileage was when we bought the vehicle not much more it had still a eight it had still a eight in yeah 108,000 something so the yeah. vehicle was basically not driven since May because it was sold to a used car dealer and it was sitting there. And when we bought it, the transmission didn't shift right and it had a leak, as you guys could see in our previous video. Now you tell me if you think Land Rover cured this problem or if they did the same mistake we did. Like I said, everybody can do mistakes, but I claim Land Rover put this vehicle through MOT with a leaky transmission and they did not, like I did, inspect in the next morning if the transmission is losing oil. And if you remember, I checked it right away in the same evening and then in the next morning and it was immediately leaking oil again. So it was not difficult to see that they did not cure this problem. It's still leaking. And charge two and a half thousand euros. I contacted this Land Rover um, dealership, which is a licensed Land Rover dealership, and I wrote them a big letter. Okay, so my claims, what I made to them. Okay, the diagnostics you did in your workshop for 159 euros was at least incomplete. After the repair, the leak was still there. I'm claiming they should have found that. Therefore, they acquired an MOT on a vehicle which was just patched up and not properly fixed. You're not supposed to do that, okay? Yeah. Also, they did not diagnose the problem with the shifting correctly because it came back. Yes, and they Because it was leaking oil. Once this thing loses a lot of oil, mm -hmm. then the 8 HP doesn't shift anymore. Bullet number five, I said, you as a licensed Land Rover dealer missed to check the VIN number against this service bulletin for a leaky transmission. The last bullet point I told them, if you would have checked your success of the repair on the next morning, you would have seen that the thing is still leaking. And further I wrote, well, faults happen and everybody can do a mistake, but what are their recommendation now, what they should offer, and I just said that high potentially because I don't want anything from these guys. I will never ever enter a Land Rover dealership with one of my vehicles, but I asked them high potentially, what would they offer to their customer? I, by the way, I was talking to a guy who was really nice there and he was very cooperative, but he didn't answer the email. The email was answered by um, manager after sales. He says, it's all in German, so I have to translate it on the fly, okay? The facts presented from me are in multiple aspects completely wrong. That's his opening sentence. Now, I'm not going to read the rest. The entire mail you see here is basically telling me that I'm a dumbass and that I'm completely wrong. He is claiming one thing which I can't verify. He is claiming that the vehicle came back later on and they did a second diagnosis, found another oil leak, but the customer did not award this business to him. But in my opinion, they should have said, well, we diagnosed it wrong last time. We're going to give you a discount this time. That's what I recommended here in my, in my email. So what I want you guys to do is you write in the comments, if you think they did their repair job properly by cleaning up a vehicle, fixing an oil leak and not checking that it's fixed, or if you think shit happens, this can happen to everyone, the customer should pay the absolute full amount to get it fixed again. And also, maybe there is an expert out there who knows about casting and maybe about ZF casting. If it is possible that just from standing there, that this vehicle developed that leak in the casting within, you know, 50 kilometers, because that's what they claim. They said that leak was not there when they had the vehicle four months earlier with the same mileage. 
I think that's a pretty big stretch to claim, well, the casting kind of weakened from the sun, okay? And it was standing there, and there was probably a dog peeing at it. I don't know. Probably from heat expansion, the leak will get worse, but I don't think that within 500 kilometers from the time the previous owner sold it to the time I bought the vehicle, this vehicle developed this kind of a leak. So I think his claim that this was not visible to them at the time, I think that's flat out a lie. Well, a lie isn't a lie if they don't know the truth. It's just ignorance, I think. They should just agree, well, you found a problem on the vehicle we didn't find. And I gave them all the opportunities to say something nice, okay? I said, think about the facts I'm claiming here and put yourself into the position of your customer. It was an expensive repair on an expensive car. Please tell me your recommendation in writing. I told you on the phone, from my point of view, a potential solution. And my potential solution was that he should at least do the inspection for the next service job when he's looking for the leak for free. That's the minimum he should do because his inspection was incomplete. Then he can charge an arm and a leg to do everything again. No, he shouldn't. He, he could. It is got to be an expensive repair. We also had to do it twice, okay? We also have to pay for it twice because we failed the first time. Who yes, would have known that? Yes, but if you would do that job on Rainer's Discovery or Fabian's, you wouldn't charge him anything. We do know? everything for free, but yeah, I but you think... Yeah, we do it again and again until the problem is fixed. Yes, I mean, they run a business. And they got to make money. The minimum they should do is do the inspection for free. The second thing is they should give the customer a good discount on the part. No, okay. they shouldn't charge. Okay, you guys let us know what you think how Land Rover should have behaved here. If they would have just agreed that they did not fix that job properly, I would be all happy. Yeah. Everybody can do mistakes. I'm not perfect. I didn't see the first time that the leak was coming out of the casting. I, I mentioned do... it. It well, could come out of the but casting. I was telling Vera, <laughs> well, casting isn't leaking. What are you talking about? Okay, so damn, she was right. Yeah? <laughs> Let me make my little template, then cut a piece of aluminum. We glue this back in. Because you're mad at me. Yes. I didn't do anything. Land Rover did something. Yes, but you say that the customer has to pay. I say the for... customer has to pay the repair. Yes, but the customer has to pay for all that taking off the chunk again. The customer didn't pay for taking off the chunk in the first place because they only fixed the oil pan. There is no chance in the world that the customer would get around paying for this repair. This is not Land Rover's fault. Oh, Diagnosis. yeah, now I get it, what you're saying. Yeah. The only thing they did wrong is they diagnosed the problem wrong. They failed to get an MOT properly done. They could get in trouble for that even. And they failed in agreeing with me, okay? You should be agreeing with me. Yeah, because of that flaky shifting, this car got a new prop shaft for a yes. thousand euros, this you know? Car got a new owner because of it. Yes. The poor lady sold this car because she was just she done. didn't know what else to do with it. Yeah, she was done. I'm gonna with write her a letter and tell her that she can see her car in our very entertaining YouTube videos. She's probably driving a Toyota by now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because of Land Rover. <laughs> Here, let me show you guys what I did now. There, I made this little template. So now we gotta cut this out of 10 millimeter aluminum. They lost a customer over it. I don't think she bought another one after this. No. And I'm gonna find out and I'm gonna let you guys know. I'm gonna cut it out of. 14 millimeter. Yeah. Okay. That way. Good, we cut it out. Yes. 230 euros. I can cut a few minutes for that. We're gonna the, give it a taper just like you said. Yeah, okay? it needs a taper. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the right taper. That's the right taper, okay. So I have to drill a little hole and put a screw onto it. And then you have to pluck the hole. No, I gotta... Oh yeah, you don't need to... I gotta drill it through because I'm not entirely stupid. <laughs> yeah, alone setting up that machine always takes a while. That's why I never film it. 
Now I don't want to drill this through now. Yeah. Because I'm said I'm not as stupid. <laughs> yeah. I'm nulling the scale. This way I'm smart. Tabum 69 couldn't have done that any better. Oh, damn. He could have. And he always okay. has to look. I always <laughs> find everything like right away. No, you're not. This goes in here. Yeah. Hope you get it. Oh my god. I'm gonna give it a little more roundness here. Go. Look at that. Oh. Oh, get it out again. I'm gonna do an imprint here. Really sharp, which I can upload for our Patreons if somebody wants to duplicate that piece ahead of time. This way you don't have to do all this work while the car is taken apart. Yeah. There we go, yeah? He has open plates in his junk drawer well, I and I, of course, cut myself looking well, for the right pen. I'm first going to use brake cleaner and after the brake cleaner I'm going to use acetone. Now I got it here wiped out with acetone. This is also nice and clean. We're going to use two good beads of JB Weld here. Okay. This has a very long work time. So I put it in and then you can film what it looks like, yeah? So he put the putty all around it, but that looks good. Coat it on both sides. This makes it a lot easier to uh, get a good bond. Yeah. Oh, oh, there is an unexpected problem. There is air pressure inside, so this is not going to work. WD-40. WD-40 pipe. I'm gonna stick that in the corner. I stuck that into the corner so that I can get the air out. It's stuck. Oh, shit. Pull it out. I gotta close this hole now up. Oh my. Why don't you use your fingers? My fingers? Yeah, I think that would be a better idea. As long as it's all tight in there. It's definitely all tight. Good? Yeah. So, second day working, actually fourth day working on our oil leak problem. And so here's a transfer case, which has not been the problem. He ordered the new O-ring for in here. We're gonna change that. Uh, we don't wanna get any comments that we missed that. Here is the new O-ring with anti-C squeeze. He's got a new seal for the DPF. It goes in here because the old one is rotten. We have new prop shaft bolts from the rear and the front prop shaft. And some of them were actually donated by Karl Hansen and Nicholas Cross. So we only had to buy a couple of them. So that was really cool. Thank you very much. And like he explained yesterday, we used JB Weld instead of DEF CON. So here's the parts list of the stuff I used, including this little one-to-one -one sketch. I'm gonna scan this as a PDF and you'll find a link to this PDF in the video description. Here is the finished ZF gearbox housing. Now the JB Weld did not cure fully overnight because it's awfully cold today and JB Weld doesn't cure when it is really cold. Everything is ready to go back together. That's the most expensive o-ring I ever bought. Together with this little bit of anti-seize, so same as Molly Cota, for example. 24 euros. So we put some of that stuff in here. Yeah. Ah, that stuff. Nicely seeded in there. So, this is good. Yeah, perfect. You're doing everything wrong today. I don't know why. Yeah. It's 
go. It's going to be a puzzle now, fitting all the screws in. Okay. And But we have shown that in our previous. <laughs> so the rest of the job we're going to do off camera. We'll see you when this is back done. And Christian is not amused by my filming skills today. He put me to work to copper grease useless nuts and bolts. So I'm busy. <laughs> Yes, it worked for a while. <laughs> this is called an anti-Toyota spanner. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the Land Rover thing. You have to have all the tools. Click, 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 click. New bolts. And <laughs> made all these nice and shiny. Oh, good. Perfect. Well, we copper grease everything. Okay, all we gotta do is torque the drive shaft bolts, put this heat shield back on, and go on a test drive. Oh my god. Ah, looking so good. Reset it all the faults. It's gonna do that with the gap tool we have. If you guys always ask what app I'm using, that's like, hey, what do you fill in your tank there in the back? Is that water or is that Gatorade? A gap 2D diagnostics, okay? Four wheel drive range circuit. Hang on, <laughs> we still got a fault. Oh my God. I didn't plug in a connector, I would say. Oh shit, again. Unfortunately. This is embarrassing for me, okay? Listen. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yes, an air suspension is working. Whoa! Shit! So that's pretty much it for this video. That was one crazy repair and we're gonna do an outtake now in both cases, okay? Because <laughs> yes. we haven't looked underneath if it's still leaking. So let's first do the devastating one. Oh no, I'm still <laughs> smiling. Okay, <laughs> let's first do the positive one. Yeah. Wow, luckily we got that fixed, okay? Unbelievable. This time it wasn't Land Rover alone who screwed it up, okay? It was ZF. Just Land Rover, in my opinion, screwed up by letting this go and not fixing that in the first place when the yep. vehicle was in the shop. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this repair. I hope you learned something. You know, it's not always you think that was okay? It's not always purely Land Rover's fault, only partially their fault. And we want to thank our Patreons a lot for their support. Without them, these kind of videos would certainly not be possible every week. Yeah. And if you give it a thumbs up, we would appreciate it. And in any case, if you're already subscribed, please don't unsubscribe. And we'll see you next Sunday. Let's do the devastating one, <laughs> just in case. Man, I really thought we had it this time, but um, oh obviously not. We're gonna be end up taking that thing out again, looking again what it is, who it knows? It must be coming from the transfer case then. I don't know, I think it's coming from the Land Rover. Don't hit that little, little tiny doggy. Yeah, anyway, we have to look completely devastating because yeah, that's, that's the just in case it isn't sealed video ending. I'm so damn desperate and devastated. <laughs> Okay, and I I don't know what to say. Okay. The devastating part wasn't really authentic, I think. Yeah, maybe we, maybe, whoa. Holy shit. Yeah. We almost had like a biker on our hood. Yeah, okay. Let's not drive over the Fiat 500 here. Okay. So I actually forgot to film the result of the repair. And we're going to look at this now quickly over my pit here. So, here we are. This is where the leak was. The oil was coming out between the transfer case and the automatic transmission right there. And it is now completely dry. It's been now about four or five days since we shot that video outtake. And that completes it. So thanks for watching.